like this is the three and a half tonne piece of oak that Phil and the boat building team are attempting to transform into a dark age dugout boat this weekend. As Phil said, time is short, so the plan is to work in shifts around the clock to try and get it finished in time for the presentation. We're lucky we can use this side of the tree without incorporating this piece of rock. Right. Yeah. And the maximum width we can have is up to here, is it? This, this is the heart. This, the is, heart this is the bit we've got to right. keep. So, thankfully we got Damien with us, who's probably made more log boats than I've had hot dinners. How's I it hope going? not, you'd be hungry. <laughs> four, but anyway. How's it going then? It's going very well, uh, incredibly quickly. We're starting out by doing each stage using the tools of the period, or as near as we can get to it. And then to save some of the time, uh, or to save some time, we're using chainsaws uh, for a certain amount of the work. Uh, Why don't you use fire? Uh, uh, they, well, they used fire in places in the world where they have trees which are naturally inflammable, like in the southeastern United States where the trees are full of resin. And a lot of European explorers who went there in the 16th century saw the Native Americans building dugout boats using fire, yeah. partly because they didn't have metal tools and partly because these trees will actually burn green. But oak is so full of water, this stuff, if you feel it, it's damp. It feels damp and cool. You feel it? It feels damp and cool. And it's so full of sap, this is a freshly felled tree, that it won't burn anyway. You, Do you so have to seal it when it's... Um, you probably don't have to, but a lot of... We know from uh, accounts from various parts of the world that people tend to use animal fat. So this bit down here has sm been smeared with lard to stop it drying out too much. It's not so much to keep the water out, it's to stop the wood drying too fast. Oak's got a bit of a tendency to split yeah. as it dries in the sun and the wind. And if you put animal fat over it, that slows it down and just reduces the splitting controls it to a certain amount. One thing you might notice, Tony, is that this is actually upside down. Yes. You are very, actually very looking important. at the yeah. bottom of the boat. Yeah. Oh, so I hadn't the, realized ah. the <laughs> This is the bottom, and that's the, that's the front end. There was a, 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 a tree of this size a common feature around here then? I think it would have been in the ninth century, uh, because not only was the dugout built out of a tall, straight tree that grew up high amongst other trees and dense woodland, but also the palisade timbers from around the Cranog were also made from very big oaks, perhaps so much in diameter, nice straight grain, very few knots, and, and so on, and growing maybe for 150 to 300 years, probably around the 200 year mark generally. And those trees produce easy to work straight grain timber that you can work by splitting. People didn't have saws then, so they couldn't use any kind of saw, hand saw or chainsaw. So they had to do all the work with adzes and axes, as we're actually doing now. There would have been less knot holes in the original logs yeah. because it was much more forested here. Yeah, it was much more densely forested. You can look at timbers from an archaeological site like Langors, record the way the, the, the trees seem to have grown from which the timbers were cut, and then you can actually, uh, to some extent, visualise the landscape of the period in yeah. three dimensions. When people manage woodland, mainly for firewood, they produce essentially generally smaller, knottier trees. In a semi-natural sort of natural oak woodland, the trees are, are being forced to grow up tall and straight, and that produces lovely, sweet, easy timber to work. So by looking at, at, at the boat in the museum, it gives yeah. us some idea of what the, the environment was like at the time? By looking at the boat in the museum and the other timbers from the site, yes. And uh, we can reconstruct semi-natural high woodland being, or if you like, forest, uh, right. wild wood, being a feature in the landscape somewhere around here. Right. But in a way, when you see things like the uh, Clangorse number one boat, as it's called, in the Museum of Brecon. You can actually, if you if you know what you're looking at, you can almost hallucinate and visualise the wild of the, of the period. Oh, I'd like to try that. With just a matter of a few hours to go, the dugout boat is almost finished. It's now just a question of finishing touches and making plans to transport it to the water. You ain't gonna run off with that boat, are you? <laughs> Fantastic. It floats. And I must say I'm relieved, because Phil's threatening to take me on a trip across the lake later on. 